On this episode of Exactly How, we're gonna show you how to pick the best market to invest in real estate in. We're also gonna give you a little secret you can do on Google to understand how markets are progressing on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast-paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Welcome everyone to the Connected Investors Podcast, Exactly How. During this episode, you'll discover exactly how to pick winning real estate markets, which is so important. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com, the world's largest social network of real estate investors. And today we have the privilege to learn from a guy who believes you should, you should and could own America. I look forward to really digging into that one with you. Prior to his career and what he's doing today, he was the CEO of Own America and the managing partner of Rand Realty. He's also been a part of some real estate startups back in the day and is a wealth of information. But his prior career changed when he saw what happened in the housing crisis and saw there was going to be a massive investment boom. I would describe our guest as a very intuitive thinker. His name is Greg Rand, and today he's going to explain exactly how to pick winning real estate markets. Greg, thank you so very much for taking time to speak with me. It's great to be here, Ross. Thank you. Yeah, I see actually you talk about owning America, and behind you I see an American, uh, American map right there. Exactly. Yeah, I have, I have one of those with beer, t- with beer uh, tops you can kind of… Oh, I'm <laughs> jealous now. That's even better. Um, yeah, actually… Speaking of that, for anyone who's just listening to this podcast, you can find all these episodes over on YouTube where we give you some more uh, information that we can't quite show you on a podcast because you can't see what we're talking about. So make sure to subscribe to the Connected Investors YouTube channel as well. So Greg, before we dive into exactly how to pick a winning real estate market, you contribute a lot of your success to daydreaming, which I, which I found sure. really interesting. <laughs> Why do you think daydreaming has played such a big role in your success? Um, I'm glad I said that when you guys asked me about this, because that is a a secret to my mindset that I stumbled upon young in life. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about writing the history of what's happening right now as if I'm already six months from now or six years from now. And the daydreaming goes something like, okay, I'm pretending it's January of 2020, and I'm actually thinking sometimes out loud in my car, like a, like a mental patient, actually saying out loud that, you know, back in July when we launched that new site, the new uh, national MLS site, it came out of the gate strong. The press release got picked up by the Wall Street Journal. That changed everything. And next thing you know, and I start talking through um, an outcome that's right in front of me that is so exciting that... Um, it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who's short on hobbies, Ross. And so when it comes to, you know, the business is all the things that I'm passionate about, all the facets of it, the hobbies are woven in there. And this daydreaming thing has just always been about thinking about what I'm working on, what's it going to feel like when it worked, and how will I talk about it in retrospect if I was going to tell somebody, you know, if I was going to write the screenplay uh, for the movie of what's about to happen. And so that's it, man. It's just thinking out loud and dreaming wide awake about the outcomes that you really want to see happen. Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic way to kind of get out of your own head and yep. you know, really see the big picture. And so often, you know, we all get lost in the details. We get lost in the details. That's a really uh, you know, interesting uh, thing to, to pick as far as what's contributed to your success. But what you're doing is you're, you're really, you're fortune telling. Yep. Right? You're, you're getting better at predicting the future, which ties right into this whole episode on figuring out which is, which is a good market. So guys, this is going to be a phenomenal episode. There's going to be a lot of notes you're going to want to take down. You're going to want these, some action plans. And uh, Greg's even been gener- generous enough to give us a free book to give away. You don't have to worry about taking notes because you can visit exactlyhow.com and get the detailed action plan of this episode and all of our episodes. Get the book. Everything we're going to talk about here today, you can find over at exactlyhow.com so you don't have to uh, try to find a pen while you're driving down the road listening to this podcast. In addition, you'll also be entered into a drawing we do every single week 
where we pick someone that gets to win our $3,000 pre-MLS software, allowing you to find deeply discounted properties in any market. So once Greg tells you what market is the market to be in, you can use our software to find the best deals there. Again, $3,000 value, you can get entered into a drawing. If you're watching this live on Facebook or YouTube, there's still time to get into today's drawing. So visit exactlyhow.com. In a few moments, we're gonna announce the winner. So Greg, for those of us that are new on this, this whole topic, because we have tons of real estate investors that listen to our show, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, business uh, individuals, can you really define what a winning real estate market is? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I'm a big believer in the first rule of real estate, right? Which is location, location, location. This whole, the, the idea that I named my company Own America, uh, that was intentional, obviously. Um, to convey the concept that that's what I think we're all doing here. I think the, the fact that this country is available to be purchased one piece at a time and the, what makes the country great also makes the investment great. The fact that it's a beacon of freedom and opportunity, people across the world, people who are born here stay, people who are born elsewhere want to come here. The only folks who actually want to leave are like a couple of loudmouth movie stars who, if they don't like whichever president is coming about, they threaten to quit, but they never, they never actually go anywhere. Um, the concept of picking a winning market is basically trying to understand where the demand is going to be strongest, understanding yourself, getting out ahead of it, and accumulating super high quality real estate, starting with the, the, the location itself. Great, great. Well, let's, uh, let's dive into the steps. Someone wants okay. to be in real estate. Uh, I'm going to ask some challenging questions a little later on about, about investing in different markets outside of your own, which I'm sure is in everyone's mind. But mm -hmm. just the first three steps. All right, first two steps. First of all, planning, understanding yourself, okay, and, and what you care about. Number two is identifying the where, okay, focusing on those shape, shifting plates of earth in the market. And then once you identify the market you like, going deep and finding the assets that fit your, uh, your personal uh, style. Great, great. So let's, let's jump right into planning because this, okay. is, this, is, this is really important. So Greg, some, for someone who is looking ahead all the time, how do you plan what market to go into? Well, I start off with understanding myself, okay? So every investor is different. Every investor has different tolerances for, you know, how old are you? How long are you investing for? I hope everybody who is investing in real estate, even if they're trying to make some short-term plays to build up their equity base, that they're still thinking long-term because this asset, it's an unnatural asset to try to do short-term. Even if you do short-term flips, the game of accumulation long-term should be what you're focused on, I think. And so understanding yourself, starting with how old are you? I'm 35. When do you want to retire? 55. Good. That's 20 years. That's all the time in the world, right? Um, and, so, and thinking from there about what your tolerances are, like what are you investing for? This is all like the classic wealth management conversation you'd expect to have with somebody who sold stocks and bonds and mutual funds and insurance policies, but have that conversation with yourself or your real estate advisors um, to understand, like, I am a big believer in identifying the things and the people that I'm investing for, okay? Me and my wife, when we retire, how do we want to be living? How much income do we want to be having? I want to, again, daydream about my life in 20 years, what it's going to feel like, the kids, the eventual grandkids, right? Any nieces and nephews, anything that's important to me or a person that's important to me, I'm going to make a list of those things so that as I then begin to when I have those outcomes out in front of me way out, and then I start getting more in depth in terms of my execution, I begin assigning individual properties to individual objectives. All right? So, for example, like this is something I picked up on this years ago when I was working in New York, working with a lot of commercial investors in New York. I noticed that a lot of them, I started asking the question like, when, tell me the, the first building you bought or your favorite building. And the conversation oftentimes would go to, I bought this, you know, I remember a great example was a story of a guy, barrel chested Italian guy, owned a greasy industrial property in northern New Jersey, telling me about it like it was a puppy. Like he loved this thing. It was like <laughs> beautiful. It, it was referring, and I said, so he is the first person to clue me into this. He referred to it. Um, and I said, well, somehow I got into the subject, subject of what was the purpose of why is this property so important to you? Did you get a great deal on it? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's important to me is this was for my daughter. I bought this for my daughter. So no man would ever control her with money. Right. That's what he said. That's like, okay, cool. By the way, how's your daughter? She was like three months old. 
I love it. No, that's, that's fantastic. And we started calling it compartmentalizing, right? Starting to identify objectives and then tie properties to the objectives. When I wrote a book some years back, I had a chapter called Have a Kid Buy a Condo. And it was based upon me applying that in my own life. We had our first kid. She was less than six months old. I bought an investment property. It was a condo. A lot of people say that's the wrong thing to buy, but I needed hands off. I, I had my hands full, so I needed hands off. But the idea was her college fund is 18 years out. So let me make a nice long-term investment of a condo for 18 years, plant a seed, raise the kid, mature the investment. Now she's going to be a senior. And guess what? College has been in hand for 18 years. I haven't thought twice about it because I've just been watching that property build equity over time reinvesting the cash flow. And now a college fund is sitting there. I could refinance it. I could sell it. I could just leave it there and use other money. But the point was, I rode the whole housing crisis with that property in my portfolio. Never thought for a second about selling because I didn't care what it was worth in 2011. I only care what it was going to be worth in 2020. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you know, all of the planning that goes into making sure your kids are, are safe. I mean, you can right. give them a college mm -hmm. education, right? There's Gosh, hundreds of thousands of dollars there. Or you can give them a paid off apartment complex that <laughs> yeah. they can uh, manage. And let me tell you something. While I was in college, I, I lived in a triplex and I learned that I bought. And I learned more about life, managing people, having to get people to pay me rent than I ever would have learned from any, uh, any business course. So there's a lot of value in, uh, in getting in there. And That's so funny, by the way. Kevin Ordner, who you know, who's the CEO of Renner's Warehouse, who bought my company in January. So now he's my boss. He did the same thing. In college, he bought a duplex and he learned immediately the beauty of collecting rent. Like his buddy lived in the next apartment over, but his buddy's situation and his situation were totally different. Yeah. I mean, I was making 600 hours a month living at my apartment. Right. So I was able, I had extra time to go out and learn how to invest in real estate and take risks because I didn't have to worry about where the next payment was. It was, uh, it was financial freedom at a very, very young age. And right. you know, something that you said here, I want to point out to everyone on the line here because we talk a lot about uh, wholesaling and quick flipping. And when you think about a real estate investor, a real estate investor is someone who puts money in real estate and, and leaves it there. If you are flipping real estate, you're essentially a business owner. You're an operations manager. So at the, at the end of the day, as you're out there flipping real estate and dealing with all of the operations, you want to move over to buying and holding as much as possible because any property you flip, if you've been flipping for a long time, most of them you wish you still had. Right. If you could have made it, if you could have, you know, whatever, um, you know, the, all the properties I flipped and I made all this money and invested in different things, it would be great to still have them. So right. it's, 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 it's a whole different mindset. Anything else you want to talk to you about as far as uh, planning goes? I think just, just the, that whole diagnosis of yourself to know, um, like you made a good point. Like I, I personally, um, I get made fun of around here because my hands are so soft, Ross, that when I hold a baby, I get chafed. Okay, oh, so there'll be, no, there'll be no renovating going on. There'll be no, I don't seek the stress property. When we get further down these steps, you'll hear more about this, but I understand myself well enough to know that I don't have the attention to pay to dealing with renovations. And so therefore, I sacrifice some equity by buying things that are in perfect condition because they fit my landlord profile. So really understanding yourself, not following what you think is the right thing because you watched Home and Garden television or you read a book or you went to a seminar, but understanding how that all applies to you and making sure that your plan fits your, 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 your personal capabilities so you don't wind up, you know, making a mistake that you could have avoided just by knowing yourself a little bit better. Yeah. Thank you for that. Now let's talk about the market because this yeah. is kind of where you, uh, you really thrive. Yeah, this is my sweet spot. The, the, because I don't find deals in, from the standpoint of distress or condition distress, I find deals from the standpoint of right place, right time. Okay. So I've got an abundance of common sense. I learned this also at a young age. I have a complete lack of book smarts, but the common sense has served me well, especially in this case, because if you're a people watcher, this is all about tracking demand drivers. Where are people going? Why are they going there? Is that going to continue? Why do they like it here? <laughs> okay. Why do they not like it over there? What are the migration patterns? Those, those population trends, those are the, the forecasters of future demand. And because they're glacial in their pace, you can actually read the tea leaves, you can pay attention, you can do your research, you can confirm things, and then you can get out ahead of it. And so as an example, I'm looking at making some investments in Houston right now, okay? 
Houston's interesting because it's gotten abused in the press. Every time anything goes wrong in the oil industry, people start calling Houston down and out, right? The Houston Chronicle will run a headline every time oil prices go down and say, Houston's over, we're screwed, it's all over now because we're overly dependent on the energy industry, but they're not, right? You look at their long-term performance, they actually have fended off all those things. Then a hurricane comes through, Houston's over, right? For some reason, Houston's got naysayers. I spent some time down there because the, the market itself is very resilient. The market itself is very diverse job-wise, and so it isn't overly dependent on energy. But I went looking for pockets. So I start with the region, the South, good, all right? Like caveman terminology, South, good. Right? <laughs> um, Texas, good. Now, where in Texas? Houston's good. Where in Houston? And I found a couple of things. I'll give you examples. And when you start getting close to the market, the oil prices are down. Okay, the oil industry is contracting as a result. What I learned down there from scratching around a little bit and asking some questions is that ExxonMobil, the giant in the industry who has installations all over the country but a heavy footprint in, in Houston, this whole energy mile that was out to the west of the city of Houston, they decided to consolidate. Because the energy industry was, consolid was contracting, ExxonMobil consolidated a whole bunch of their facilities into a massive 10,000 employee campus in an area called the Woodlands, where the real estate prices were super cheap. So inherent in the bad news about the oil industry suffering and the company that should be suffering along with it, there was good real estate news because they made a move to bring a whole bunch of folks together in a place that was basically out in the middle of nowhere until now. And the real estate prices are jacked because the demand to be near that facility for those 10,000 employees is that much stronger. So right in the middle of the bad news was actually a gem um, that I'm looking very closely at. Another, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's, uh, you know, some of the biggest deals I've ever done in my life were because of market forces like that. And uh, there's a military base not too far away from us, about two hours away. And they closed a few military bases down and moved everyone to this one town. Boom. Simple supply that's and it. demand. Yep. It was, and, it's, uh, and it's so much fun to do. And you start, you'll find... Like one of the things that I would recommend, a great little tip for, for your audience is to set up Google alerts in the markets that you're paying attention to. Um, City of Houston approves. That's the alert, okay? So uh, when Houston approves a budget, you get a notification. When they approve a train station, you get, a, you get a, a ping. When they approve the expansion of a highway because of this massive increase in future population up in this area, you get a ping. The government making decisions based upon long-term um, traffic pattern planning and master planning for the entire metro, you can start getting, that story will start talking to you. And we find them everywhere. We find, another, my other favorite one in Houston, just real briefly, is there was a, an area called, um, I'll remember the name in a second, but uh, Highland Ranch. Highland Ranch was dry. Okay, you couldn't get a beer with your burger. And they tried for years to get that lifted. They couldn't. And then a public-private sort of partnership form where the government and the the private sector came up with something called the restaurant initiative. The restaurant initiative had a nice ring to it. It got approved. And now this area that had no good restaurants, so it had no good light nightlife. So it was not as in demand as all of a sudden it was because all of a sudden all the restaurants in Houston began to run up there because there was no competition yet. Little nuanced things like that where all of a sudden you could see a place that was perfectly fine but is now just going to get some extra lift on demand because it's something as simple as taking away a restriction on selling wine with dinner. Here you go. Colorado approves. Yeah, exactly. Marijuana. Yeah. Those real estate prices have been. It's a beast. The whole state yeah. of Colorado is going to benefit from that industry setting up shop there. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's, a, it's a whole new type of gold, gold rush. Yep. So let me ask you a question about, about the market. Cause I know there's a lot of people here that would be very, uh, very scared to invest outside of their hometown. Would you recommend, uh, you know, areas where there might be family, where there's might be some sort of relation to the area? Just, just tell me how you deal yeah. with individuals. Who exactly right. Yeah, feel like they need to touch the property. Everybody's got a primary hometown market in their life, right? Where they live, where they grew up. They may have another one where they move to, but oftentimes there's a secondary and a couple of secondaries. Where I went, I went to Albany for college, Albany, New York. That's another market that's in my life. I understand that I've been there. I'm a New Yorker, okay? Uh, I don't live there anymore, but um, 
if I was there, I could not get cash flow on a single family home and I like single family homes. So where would I go? We spent all of our vacation time as a family down in Southwest Florida, Fort Myers, Naples, Cape Coral, Sanibel Island. So the first thing I would do is that if where you are doesn't work or you really want to do something different, there are places, even if you have family that live there, any place where you have a certain degree of familiarity because of something can be um, that secondary hook that not only there's a familiarity there, not only could you see yourself going there to visit family for Thanksgiving and while you're there, you do some research, you attend a planning board meeting, you will look at some properties, whatever. Uh, but then all of a sudden you've got your, when, when I hear a hurricane is coming to Florida, the first thing I wonder is it coming to Southwest Florida because my mom still lives there. So there, there's radar that you have up as a result of that market being in your life. And that would be the second place I would go. Yeah. And you know, I don't want to discount that tip you gave earlier about the uh, city name approves Google alert. Yeah. That is, you know, if you're thinking about a few different markets, you want to see who's being more progressive, who's investing in their areas, the good, the bad, the ugly. That is a very easy way. I mean, just, I'm interested just to do it in my market. Right. You know, I'm already investing in my market, but I want to know what's going on. You know, I've seen a lot of people uh, make a lot of money uh, buying and selling land that the kind of our new highways are going through. Right. Saying, hey, yeah, they publish be, this those is, things. This is going to be all retail space one day. Yeah, there's, I live in Charlotte now, right? They publish, and that's another, another way of thinking about this is that every city has got their ring around the city, right? So like it's more expensive in the core, it gets a little bit cheaper, then you have your suburbs begin to emerge. But suburbs emerge at different paces. There are early suburbs and there are lagging suburbs. So you can see that this suburb over here, the prices are X, they're X minus 40% over there. This one developed first, this one's developing later. You're literally getting out and that, you know, it's like they're building the, the train tracks that way. So go buy real estate where the train tracks are eventually going to be. It's very common sense. It's never been a better time to do this research because of how transparent everything is with the internet now. Um, and, it, and it allows you to actually put strategic passion behind it, which makes the whole thing more fun. Yeah. So do you have any recommendations of top cities that you're seeing people have success in or, th or cities you might think uh, are going to be very fruitful in the not so distant future? Yeah, I do actually. Um, I've been asked recently um, in the last year to identify what are the next big SFR cities, single family rental cities. And, you know, we know the ones that were the part of the big first wave. And it was very interesting to approach that because we started noticing similarities, qualitative similarities of the trends in a city and then quantitative similarities with the way those cities were 15 years ago. So like, what's the next Dallas? My answer to that is Oklahoma City. Okay, a lot of the market fundamentals, Oklahoma City looks a lot like and behaves a lot like Dallas 20, 25 years ago. Okay, same economic drivers, same industries, and now it's starting to look real attractive. A lot of people that can't afford Dallas are going to Oak City. Same thing, what's the next uh, Nashville? Chattanooga is the next Nashville. What's the next Denver? Colorado Springs, right? What's the next Charlotte or Atlanta? Maybe Columbia, right? So within striking distance, same migration fundamentals and just reason it's like, it's like the next generation of the same city, you know, yeah. the grandchild of the same city. What is it? And you start to you start to get a comfort level that, Hey, this does look familiar. I'm in a time warp right now. I can see where I think the city's going to go and you can load up on that city. Wow. This, this whole theme is tying right back into daydreaming. I love it. Yeah, it really is. Isn't it? <laughs> I love it. And you guys get to daydream on what you want to do with all that residual money that's going to come in once you have True. these properties out there and you're able to uh, you know, transfer these assets to your, to your children and make their lives better. That's why it's, it's so important that you're uh, you know, attending these, these podcasts to learn these, these little tips and tricks that, that echo for generations. You know, if you take action today, they'll have a, a picture of you know, great-grandfather, great-grandma over that, uh, that you know, changed, changed the whole direction for a family. One family exactly. member gets into real estate grinds through it changes it changes your lineage all the way you know till the, till the end of time until one of your kids screws it up basically exactly <laughs> so actually um i'm going to announce the winner of the of the contest for awesome. access to the pre mls so i want to uh they went to exactlyhow.com where again you can find all the show notes the action plans all of our past shows all of our gifts from this shows and all the other shows at exactlyhow.com they threw their name in the hat and the winner of this week's $3,000 software is Dean Elliott. Dean, congratulations. 
we'll be reaching out to you. We'll give you a demo. We'll show you exactly how to use the software and get up and running very quickly. That so could be a life-changing event right there, couldn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just for going to exactlyhow.com. All right, so we talked about planning. We talked about markets. A lot of fun there. Um, the asset now. Let's, let's talk about the different types of assets. Yeah, so I'm all about single family homes. Um, and I'll tell you why. And by the way, I, I preface that by saying that the first acquisition of the first place you live being a two or three family is the best way to start without question. I like single family um, over multifamily and other commercial assets because I'm so glued to this idea that it is the pure instrument through which you buy the place because it's tied, to, it's tied to population. The place equals the people. The people want to live indoors. They tend to eventually want to have kids and dogs and so it ends up landing at the doorstep of a house. And so I, like, I love retail. I won't buy retail because retail is co in competition with Amazon. I buy houses near Amazon facilities because those employees need some place to live. So you can play the flip side of the trend Whenever you can play the trend of people, houses are the way that you play it, uh, in my book, okay? Um, another reason why I like them, this is, there's two things that are worth noting. One is that uh, they're granular, okay? So if I accumulate a portfolio of 25 houses and I want to sell one, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I want to I get out of everything on this side of the highway and double down on everything on that side of the highway. You can't do that when you buy 25 or 30 doors of a multifamily but you can do that with single family. So it allows you a risk management vehicle. It allows you a dynamic change your mind, undo a mistake kind of a thing because you can go down to the single door. And the third one is the value of that property is not propped up by what investors are willing to pay for. The value of that property is propped up on what home buyers are willing to pay. And they're much more emotional, much less analytical. And so that 6 million real estate transactions every year, most of which are home buyers, are what drive the value up over time of single family homes. And so um, I don't have to be an investor who thinks now is the perfect time to sell and I got to find some knucklehead who thinks it's the right time to buy. Okay, I can think it's the right time to sell and I'll find a home buyer who just had a baby, doesn't care about timing. Timing is right for him or her, um, him and her. I guess yeah. he's not having the baby, she'd be. Um, so that's the idea is that it, it provides a level of flexibility and a level of connectivity to the root um, you know, economic driver, which is population. Yeah. Now that, that was a really good takeaway there, being able to sell the property without having to sell it to another investor. Right. An investor's always just going to look at the numbers and they're going to say, right. all right, you're <clears throat> getting a $1,200 a month for rent. It's worth 120,000, right? Like exactly. It's, it's a, it's a lot better to be able to, uh, to sell that retail buyer. Well, any other, any other tips before we move on? Um, listen, my only last second. one is I just, you know, the, the thing I started with the idea that don't be ashamed of having soft hands. Don't be ashamed of the kind of guy like I just bought two houses. They went into service this last two weeks. I paid asking price for both of them. Okay. I wanted them. They were in one of these pockets that I found that I'm totally convinced is going to get uh, outsized appreciation over the next several years. A train station, a commuter rail train station got approved. I'm loading up within walking distance. And I'm paying asking price, which a lot of people would say that's stupid, except for the fact that I know I'll pay more next year. I'll pay a lot more the year after. And so I swoop in and grab things. My version of being a great negotiator is when I decide I want something, I almost always come back with it. <laughs> well, your, your model is, is, is a lot different than uh, people who watch a Flip This House show. Yeah. Right? Because true. you're basically banking on appreciation. You know you're going to be holding this for X, Y, Z years. You have a plan. You're buying this house. This house is going to be your, you know, boat payment or wh whatever yeah. it might be when you're when you're you know 70 years old. So a lot of people that are that are buying today and selling fast, they have to buy such deep discounts because they're buying their money now. You're planting a seed. You're waiting. This is why it's a real wealth estate management tool. That's right. It's a wealth yeah. management vehicle. The way I'm approaching it is wealth management. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that I gave people, let them give themselves permission to not have to do what I think is the harder and more risky way, exciting as can be, finding a, a, a deeply discounted flip. Um, but I have all my risk and energy is put into business right now. And so anything that I make, I want to park and I want to make it grow at an outsized return. Uh, so it's a different time of my life, a different plan. Um, and it may fit a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much for sharing exactly how to pick winning real estate markets. Um, 
let me ask you a question. What do you think your life would be like if you never started investing in real estate? My life, that's a weird question. So my life would be, I don't, I think that I would, first of all, I'd be a hypocrite because I'm talking about investing in real estate in a podcast. And if I had never done it, that would be bad news. Um, I found something that um, I realized is so well connected with common sense, which is a, a personal strength of mine. And you go with your strengths, you know? So I think if I wound up someplace else, I would have missed out on finding a lane that I really fit in perfectly. Yeah. All right, Greg, you're not getting uh, off this call without doing the rapid fire section here. So I'm going to ask you a few random questions and just whatever comes to mind. Okay. All right. Uh, scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? Oh, four. Four. Yeah. All right. Get up <laughs> early or stay up late? Uh, stay up late. How many hours do you s of sleep do you get every night? Seven. What's your favorite or the last book you read? Uh, the last book, I, I love Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. If you could be any superhero, what would it be? Superhero, Captain America, bro. Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's something everyone should do less of? Uh, complain. What's something everyone should do more of? Appreciate what you have. Will people live on Mars in your lifetime? No. All right, Bitcoin, bang or bust? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate uh, you, got, you taking the time to be here. And for everyone who made it to the end of the call, I just want to congratulate you. Most people don't finish what they start. You jumped on the call. You learned a lot from Greg. Hopefully, you went to exactlyhow.com and you threw your name into the hat. You got all the free resources. So if you're at the end of the show, I assume you got some good value out of it. Please go ahead and share this on your social media. Like it. At least interact with us. Give us a little thumbs up. Say, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Ross. Those, those comments are the only real feedback we have to kind of keep going here. And we invest a lot of time, energy, and effort to share these tactics with you so you can reach financial freedom. So I want to thank you so very much. And I'll talk to you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers, and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the property marketplace, you'll be able to find, favor, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.